So what do you think, cat? You think this is a nice little tube? Sort of suited just for you? Yeah, you definitely like it, don't you? All right, let's go ahead and get into this thing. All right, what's going on, guys? So, my name is P017, or PO17. It's nice to meet you all again, and I'm bringing back another new video. Now, if you have watched some of my videos before, this is going to be very similar. Uh, as you can tell, if you've watched my Sony PVM8041Q video, this looks pretty identical to it. However, this is no 8041Q. This is its slightly less capable brother, the PVM8040, which needed a little bit of work, but I got it to actually look pretty dang good. And overall, we're just going to go through it pretty quickly in terms of how it looks and everything like that. And of course, show you the imagery and talk a little bit about some of the hoops that I had to jump through to get this thing to look pretty dang good. But without further ado, let's go ahead and start just by the outside of it. So as you can see here, as I mentioned, this is a PVM8040, meaning this is an 8-inch PVM uh, or Sony Trinitron PVM. So it has the Trinitron Aperture Grille uh, front end there, which is nice and curved. Down around here, especially if you look between my PVM8041Q video, uh, this looks pretty identical. Of course, one of the differences is that mine had a green power button. This one's gray. No difference there, really, aside aesthetically. Uh, it does have your volume, contrast, phase, or tint, uh, chroma, and brightness level adjustments there. But, of course, there is a whole bunch of missing sections right over here. This is where you would find a lot of your buttons for, say, switching between RGB and regular uh, AV inputs, uh, blue mode, 16x9, etc. And, of course, right around here would be where your uh, color adjustments would be, but this one does not have that. Uh, all the color adjustments are made internally, but you cannot really adjust red, uh, so it's just mainly blue and green. But, let's continue on. There's your nice little Sony logo there. Your nice little cute little 250 TV line Trinitron screen, which is the exact same as my 8041Qs. The little Trinitron badge up there. And as we make our way up top here, this is of course your little carrying handle, as you saw me carrying this thing. It actually works pretty good. This thing's pretty light, so it's very portable. On the side here, there is nothing to note. I will say though, um, in terms of the speaker placement on this thing, as you may have known, there's no speaker holes. This does have audio out. Um, so I think the speakers are actually coming from the bottom there, which is pretty neat. Around here, this is your back. So this is, of course, where you'll find all your video inputs and stuff. And as you can see, the one thing that's missing right here is RGB. There's no RGB inputs here. This is just composite and S-Video. Um, there is one other version of this set called the Sony SSM8040, which actually excludes even S-Video on this set. So you're only left with composite. So this is basically the second lowest tier in terms of these tiny little 8-inch PVMs within this family line. It's really cool. Also, to note, for the name of this, if you're over in the PAL regions or something like that, you might see this as like a PVM 9040. Uh, that's because over there they measure it slightly differently compared to here, so that's why the naming scheme's a little different. Over here, this is your V-hold. This is where I guess this originally came from. Um, and then down here, as you might notice, between the 8041Q the 8040, there's no battery covers, or there's no place to plug in a battery, I should say. Uh, so this one is, of course, only AC in. You cannot just plug in a battery and take it anywhere you want. But down here, that's where your manufacturer number is, and that's pretty much it to note about this whole entire set. So this is pretty neat. Nice, cute little 8-inch. Like I said, it's not as, uh, I guess, dressed up as the 8041Q or even its other brothers, the 8042. 44 and 45 cues, um, but it's still pretty capable and I'll even go ahead plug it in for you guys and show you how it looks All right, I got everything plugged in. Let's go ahead and fire it up All right, and I can already hear the audio kicking in and the screen will come in here pretty soon And there it appears nice beautiful little 8 inch screen so it looks pretty dang good for what it is. Like I said, 250-line tube. Uh, I've already experienced this set a couple times before, so it's nothing too major. Uh, but it looks pretty dang good for what it is. So, I have Super Mario World right now playing through my Super Nintendo via S-Video, of course. And, of course, we'll be look taking a look at 240p test with here later. Um, but overall, this is a very nice little tube. Uh, the only downside to this thing is when I got it, um, it did have a tiny bit of screen burn. Uh, it's something not super noticeable, but I want to see if I can't capture 
a little bit of this and see if I can get close enough to eye it up. But I'm not sure if, if it'll catch on the screen or not. Might have to do it via a white background or so. Um, but overall, it's very much not noticeable. It's actually pretty good. Um, it's just this tube's been a little worn in, probably due to the fact that this was used as probably, I believe, a video uh, for VHS, uh, kind of like a rewinder, so it kept track of the VHS rewinding. Uh, and you can kind of tell, actually, there you go, you might be able to see it a little bit there, but this actually was a little VHS kind of screen there. That would tell you, it, it said something like eject or something like that there. So this was hooked up to a VCR, uh, for quite a bit of its life, and it was displaying for quite a bit of its life, too. Um, but, doesn't deter the fact that this thing still looks nice and good. Still looks pretty bright, still looks pretty sharp. I did a, a fair bit of adjustments to it, but not super, like, a lot. I didn't need to do, like, a convergence adjustment to it that much. Um, I did do a focus adjustment and a G2 voltage adjustment just to be on the safe side of things. Um, but for the most part, it's pretty dang... It was already pretty solid to begin with. Uh, the other thing that I, of course, had an issue with, uh, and these things are very well known for having the issue, is they have a problem where the color on these things will go out. And it's usually uh, within the range of, like, PVMs from about 1997 and down. Uh, they have a trimmer capacitor that sits on the side over here within the tube that's right around here. Actually, this one only had one. But like the 8041, uh, 8042, 44, 45, all that, will have two of them uh, for both NTSC and PAL. This one only had one trimmer capacitor that was orange, and it goes bad. Um, so it basically oxidizes, uh, and then you end up losing color across the whole screen right here. So what you have to do is you have to replace it with another trimmer capacitor, and then solder in another capacitor up in parallel to it. It's a pretty simple job all in all, but of course... For somebody who's just looking to get a PVM that's working and they encounter that, it can be a little tedious because it means that you have to open up this whole set, delve into it a little bit, and try to figure out what you want to do with it. Um, now, originally with this, when it had no color, I gave it a few turns on that trimmer cap and it did clear up, so I believe it was quite oxidized, but I went ahead and replaced it just to be on the safe side. And in fact, right now, I'll go ahead and show you how that capacitor looked like. Alright, so this is how it looked like uh, if my camera will focus in on me. Uh, so it looked basically like this. It is a little orange trimmer cap with a metal tip on it. And it looked just like that. So I pulled this one out. Uh, I didn't do the best job of it because this got stuck, but it didn't uh, affect continuity. So when I went and installed the new one, it was all good. But you'll have two of these if you have the 8041, 42, 44, or 45Q because you also have a PAL version of this as well uh, soldered into the board. This one does not. I don't think this one can do PAL video um, because there's a whole bunch of missing spots for it on the board. Uh, so I think this can only do NTSC. But, like I said, you just replace this thing and, well, you get colors. And I'll actually kind of do a little, how should I say, example of what it looked like. So whenever I didn't have color, well, it basically looked like that if this camera would sync. There we go. So that's essentially what you'd end up with is something that looked like that. But once you replaced it, or if you twisted it enough, uh, boom, it would come back in and it would look just like that. So that's pretty much uh, a very common issue with these PVMs, especially uh, the ones made before 1998, which has these problems. Uh, they did a revision uh, afterwards, which if you uh, don't have this problem and you notice your PVM is made after 1997 or so, about 1998 or up, probably have the revision trimmer capacitors which don't need to be replaced. So that's pretty good. But without further ado, let's go ahead and start talking about the image quality of this thing. So, as I zoom in here, as you can see, this is how a nice little low TV line count aperture grill looks like. And if you haven't watched my 8041Q video, well, the tube will look the exact same as this one because they use the exact same tube uh, with the exact same, I guess, how should I say it, specs uh, for everything. But yeah, it looks pretty dang good. And we'll go ahead and move over to 240p test suite to take a look at it more up close in detail with the grid and monoscope pattern and all that. 
All right, so now we switched over to 240p test suite. This is still on my Super Nintendo via S video, of course. So we'll go ahead and take a look at the stuff like grid. So as you can see, once the shutter speed actually catches up to it, the grid is actually pretty solid. Um, there is not very much underscan at all. Everything looks pretty dang good uh, for what it is. So nothing too bad there. Monoscope, same way. Convergence is really good on this set. Like I said, I didn't really touch it that much. Um, but I did play around with the colors a little bit, um, and I got it pretty good. So this is the color bars. Probably won't be able to tell uh, on camera, but essentially speaking, it's pretty neutral for what it is. So I'm pretty happy about the outcome of that. And of course, we get a little close in-depth shot of good old Artemio right here. And you can see the set doesn't really have scan lines on it, um, just because the tube is so low res. Um, but even if it doesn't, it actually still looks pretty dang good for what it can do. So I'm quite happy with it. Uh, so yeah, like I said, it looked identical to my, uh, what's it, PVM8041Q because they use the exact same tube with the exact same stuff inside the tube. It's very sharp, very detailed for being an 8 inch set, and overall, I like it a lot. So if you come across one of these things, don't discount the PVM8040 uh, over its other brothers, uh, because even if it is less capable than its other brothers, it's still just as nice. So that's definitely a recommendation for me if you're looking for one of these Trinitrons, especially something that's pretty portable and even smaller than, say, a 13-inch tube, like how some of the ones I uh, have come across, like my previous video with my JVC. And in fact, I'll probably put it up against it just to show you the comparison in terms of size. All right, so here's how it looks like compared to a 13-inch tube. As you can see, it's quite a bit smaller. Uh, it doesn't have as much uh, vertical height. But, of course, when it comes to how far back it goes, in fact, actually, they're about identical in terms of their length. That's just, of course, because you have to make room for the long neck that this tube has. So, overall, it's still pretty sizable in terms of, I guess, the length of it uh, going from front to back. But... It's still a cute little tube that you can definitely fit on a nice little TV shelf or just in general, wherever you want to put it to make it aesthetically pleasing. And of course, you can set it up on your desk, do anything like that. That's what actually what I set this up for. This was next to my computer for the time being until I took it off just now to show you guys what this does. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, also, in terms of the capa or the trimmer capacitor fix, um, I'm not diving it into it on this set just because I don't want to take this cover off. But I know Steve from Retrotech has definitely done a few of these in terms of recapping and everything like that. Uh, and there are a couple other videos showing how to replace those trimmer capacitors and whatnot if you run into that issue. Uh, I didn't really run into any other issue on this set, so that's really nice. But if you do, you kind of have a lot of resources for you. Stuff like a CRT database and whatnot also has some things written up about it. So it's really good to check all that out. But without further ado, that's pretty much all I got in terms of this PVM. So if you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up, and I'll go ahead and put a little bit more 240p on this at, for the outro. There we go, guys. So I figured I'd put a little Donkey Kong on here uh, just to, I guess, give a nice cute little outro for this thing. Uh, if you do find one, uh, don't be afraid to pick it up. It looks pretty dang good. Of course, if you find any of its more capable brothers, pick them up too. They all look pretty nice, but just be sure not to spend too much money on these things because, of course, you got to always double check to make sure that they're actually in proper working order. Uh, don't have very much screen burn. Any number of these sets, especially for how long they've been used for, could of course exhibit issues so it's best to stay away from those especially if you're not very tech savvy like me uh, to stay away from ones that may not be looking too good in search of ones that are not as well used or have been serviced by somebody like myself or say somebody like Steve or save on Pat or whatnot but overall that's pretty much all I got so thank you guys so much for watching I hope to bring you more nice little content footage like this uh, and I'll actually be talking about something in the future uh, in very near future that is going to be pretty awesome and involves actually modifying a CRT. It's the first one I've ever done. So that'll be pretty fun to talk about. 
But aside from that, guys, thank you very much. I'll see you guys all in the next video. Look at how cute you are. I'll let you go back to bed now.